Hi there, it's great to see you and welcome back to the penultimate virtual showcase for the Arundel Festival of the Arts. A free ticket to experience just the selection of the acts that make up the festival under normal circumstances. Stay watching to see what's coming up next. It's going to be okay with her. One day she will soften. One day she might even want to get to know her. If we ask him a question about anything, he should give us an answer all about ourselves. Lift your glasses, it's time to kick off. Hi there, we are the Simply Kate Bush Tribute Band and it's great to be here to perform to you at the Arundel Online Festival 2020. And here we are starting with Kate Bush's most iconic song and we're recording this on her birthday. So happy birthday Kate Bush as well.
I'd like to sing um, another very iconic song with my band, the Simply Kate Bush Tribute Band. And um, this is about a, a, a young wife who wanted to test her husband, test him in love, which is a very dangerous thing, with a very bad outcome. And her name was Babushka. to test her husband she knew exactly what to do a pseudonym to fool him she couldn't have made a worse move she sent him scented letters but he received them with a strange delight just like his wife and how she was before the tears and how she was before the years flew she was, and she was beautiful. She signed the letter, oh, yes. Babushka, 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 ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Oh, yes. Babushka, 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 ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. She wanted to take it further, so she arranged a feeling they had met before and candy how she reminds him of this little lady capacity to give him all he needs just like his wife before she freezed on him just like his wife and she was beautiful call it out Babushka, babushka, ya, ya. Babushka, 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 ya, ya. Babushka. 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 Now something to switch it up a bit. Thank you, how's everyone doing then? Git! <laughs> wow! Man, fantastic. Right, um, right, I'm from Brighton. What I do for a living, right? To hand out flyers in the street for a night up there. Why am I paid to hand out flyers in the street? Probably because two years ago, I graduated from Sussex University with a degree in drama! <laughs> Now, are there any uh, special ladies in the house tonight? If there are, I'd like you to point at one, okay? Point at a special lady. Yes, you there. What's your name, madam? Joe. Joe, hello, Joe. I'm just going to sing you a little song. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh. So, Maybe this is a personal question. Do you remember your first kiss? Yes. Yeah, I do as well. Give me a cheer if you remember your first kiss. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, one of the more embarrassing moments in my life, right, um, was about 14. Um, I presumed um, that the more you put your tongue in someone's mouth, the better the kiss would be. It's logical, right? Now, I have quite a long tongue. <laughs> As you can see, this poor girl almost choked to death. Um, it was like some Elizabethan sword duel, you know? Oh God! My tongue coming in like this. Uh, luckily, her name was Shireen. Nickname Shireen the Washing Machine. Because her tongue did this. I'm good day to you, sir! Saved her life! Saved her life. No, um, something uh, very bizarre and incredible happened in my life about six months ago. Um, I was struggling to make a living. I needed a new job. I was handed out many, many CVs, didn't hear back from anyone. Then a friend sent me a link online to a job. Uh, to be a magical pixie children's entertainer. Okay, the last, the last straw. Uh, children's <laughs> parties. Um, so, um, I've done probably about 35 of them now. This is a, a deluxe pixie ear. I'm now putting on one. Um, I do them in Brighton and the surrounding area. Um, um, uh, I've got them in the hat as well. It's uh, made myself. It's actually from a gnome sanctuary, but that's a different story. Decorated it myself. <laughs> and um, when I'm when I'm just getting ready to leave the house, I often seem to catch myself saying, "Right, I've got my purse, the purse of Mrs. Sweeties. Yep, I've got everything apart from my sense of dignity." <laughs> Honestly, it was the weirdest job interview that I've ever had, right? Uh, the secretary of this children's entertaining business advised me to dress up. So I went along with the ears, had multicolored tights, pointy shoes with bells on, burst in. Festival of the Arts viewers, welcome to Pots and Posies. I'm Jessie and I'm the owner of this store on Tarrant Street. We are a home furnishing store that sells everything for your home and your garden and we would look forward to seeing you. So the prize for this evening is going to be one of our beautiful Parkminster candles. There's a range of fragrances and they're one of our local stockists. Next, take a look at this. I hear the sound of the horn, and I know that it's time to go. I wish it was a taxi, and the goodbyes were over, but Dad has insisted on taking me to the airport. Rosie comes too, of course. She's at the wheel. Dad sits in the front passenger seat, and I sit in the back, which makes me feel like a child again, which I resent a little. My dad wants Rosie to take the coast road, but she insists on taking the expressway. There's a, a kind of useless argument, a standoff, 
the kind that you would only expect and tolerate from members of your own family. Rosy winds, so we take the expressway, only to find that there's roadworks in progress, so it takes a little longer than expected, and Dad gets this I told you so look on his face, and Rosie is reduced to a kind of silent rage. While I'm sitting in the back seat, looking out of the window, thinking how ugly the road to the airport is. Mum's not with us. She's at work. We've hardly spoke. Our farewell was brief, but hard. We tried to outdo each other with a, I'm still angry at you face. She wins. She always wins that game. But I felt the strength in her final embrace just before she turned away. I thought it's going to be okay with her. One day she will soften. One day she might even want to get to know her. I want them to drop me at the airport and keep going. I want this goodbye to be over. I beg Rosie with my eyes and she gets it. But airport farewells are still a big deal for Dad who insists on coming inside with me and walking me to the gate. There's mayhem at security as he sets off every alarm. How a man can have so much metal about a person is a mystery to me. But as my time as a man is finite, it's not a mystery I need to give much further thought to. At the gate, I tell Dad that I will come home soon to visit and he tells me he will come and see me in Sydney as soon as I've settled. Both of us know that those things won't happen. But pretending they will makes the parting seem easier. I linger in his embrace, knowing that this might be the final time he holds me as a man. And then he does something which takes my breath away. He kisses me on the lips and it almost does me in. It's so intimate and I've never loved him more. As I look back from the gate, he is broken. He's weeping. Rosie's holding him. She has him. I have to look away. I have to look ahead. I have to keep walking. My father's grief is a price I am prepared to pay. The airplane turns down the runway, increases its speed, lifts off the ground and makes its ascent. And as it does, I look down upon the city where I grew up and I steel myself against memories, against history and against the man that I was. By the time I land in Sydney, Mark Price, just be someone I used to know. The ideal man should talk to us as if we were goddesses and treat us as if we were children. He should refuse all our serious requests and gratify every one of our whims. He should encourage us to have caprices and forbid us to have missions. He should always say much more than he means and always mean much more than he says. He should never run down other pretty women. That would show that he had no taste or we'll make one suspect that he had too much. No, he should be nice about them all, but say that somehow they don't attract him. If we ask him a question about anything, he should give us an answer all about ourselves. He should persistently compromise us in public to treat us with absolute respect when we are alone, and yet he should be always ready to have a perfectly terrible scene whenever we want one, and to become miserable, absolutely miserable at a moment's notice, and to overwhelm us with just reproaches in less than 20 minutes, and to become positively violent at the end of half an hour, and to leave us forever at a quarter to eight when we have to go and dress for dinner. And when, after that, one has seen him for really the last time, and he has refused to take back the little things he has given one, and promised never to communicate with one again, or to send one any foolish letters, he should be perfectly broken-hearted, and telegraph to one all day long, and send one little notes every half hour by a, a private hansom, and dine quite alone at the club, so that everyone should know how unhappy he was. Oh, and after a whole dreadful week, during which one has gone about everywhere with one's husband, just to show how absolutely lonely one was, he may be given a third last parting in the evening. And then 
if his conduct has been quite irreproachable and one has behaved really badly to him, he should be allowed to admit that he has been entirely in the wrong. And when he has admitted that, it becomes a woman's duty to forgive. And one can do it all over again, from the beginning, with variations. Next, take a look at this. You are watching Arundel Festival of the Arts, an inclusive festival of the arts, including spectacular community events. 
10 sublime summertime days showcasing superb talent all over the historic town of Arundel. Experience an eclectic mix of music, visual arts, drama, dance, comedy and street entertainment from exceptionally creative local talent and carefully curated national artists. Arundel welcomes you in to discover and enjoy the impressive range of shops, restaurants, bars, cafes and attractions in a unique setting. That's all for now. It's been a blast and I'm really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tweet us now at Arundel Festival and send us your selfies. We want to see our audience.